So when do you actually use significant figures? What I mean by that is so far you've learned about how to multiply them, how to divide them, when a zero is significant, when it's not, addition and subtraction, all that sort of stuff. But the point of significant figures isn't just to memorize a bunch of rules. The point of significant figures is to help us do scientific problems, do math problems like this, where we have all sorts of units and we want to figure out what the final answer is. So what we're going to look at for the next few, uh, the next few units is finding out when we actually use significant figures for, for doing the sort of math problems that we're going to do in physics or chemistry or whatever science we're working on. So the first thing that I want to talk about in this lesson is when we use significant figures and when we don't. And we'll find out that even though you've learned the rules, you don't always use significant figures rules when you're working on a math problem. The first thing that's going to be really important to keep in mind is to figure out where we get the numbers we're working from when we do a math problem. All right, so the question you want to ask yourself is, did we get the number by measuring something? Like, did we have to put it on a scale, or did we use a ruler to measure it, or use a thermometer? Did we get a measurement, or did we find the number just by counting? You know, one, two, three, four, five, five people in a room, something like that. So if we're measuring something, we use significant figures. If we've counted numbers, we don't, okay? That's a quick introduction. Now let me give you a bunch of examples so you see what I actually mean. Okay, so let's say that we want to calculate the area of a room. Maybe, I don't know, find out how much carpet to buy for it or something. What we'll do is we'll measure uh, the length of the room and we'll measure the width of the room. And so here we get two numbers, feet. They're both in feet. So are these measurements or are these counting numbers? These are measurements. Because we couldn't just count, we had to take a ruler or a yardstick or something like that and actually measure them, okay? So when we do this math, we're going to get 195.96. And since these are measurements, we're going to be using the significant figures rules that we've learned before. There are three significant figures here, and there are three significant figures here, which means that this final answer, we're going to need to round that to three significant figures. So 195. Look there to the 9, so we're going to round that up. And my final answer is going to be 196 square feet. And I did it just like that because these are measurements. Here's what I mean by counting numbers, okay? Let's say that I have um, a whole bunch of bags of lemons, okay? And there are eight lemons in each bag. I want to find out how many total lemons I have. So I'm going to do this math. Eight lemons times 22 bags, assuming that there are eight lemons in a bag. How did I get these numbers? Are these measurements? No. These are counting numbers, right? I just have the lemons in front of me. I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I can do the same thing with the bags. These are numbers that I've got from counting. They're not numbers that I got by putting something on a scale or using my measuring stick or using a thermometer or pressure gauge or anything like that. So to figure out how many lemons I have, I'm just going to do this multiplication, 8 times 22, I'm going to get 176. And since these are both counting numbers, we don't use significant figures for them. What people often do is they say that both 8 and 22 have an infinite number of significant figures. In other words, you don't have to worry about the significant figures because you'll never run out of them. So 176 lemons, we keep that as our final answer. We don't worry about rounding to significant figures because we got this number from counting. Things get more complicated when I combine counting numbers with measurement numbers. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say that I want to know how much five quarters are going to weigh. I'm sorry, 500 quarters are going to weigh. So I know that one quarter, because I put it on a scale or something, I know that one quarter weighs 5.67 grams. That's a measurement. But I'm interested in 500 quarters. That means that I just counted those quarters, right? I just counted them out. So that means that 500, since it's a counting number, has an infinite number of significant figures. But 5.67 grams, because I determined it by like putting a, one of these quarters on a scale, has three significant figures. So 
as you've learned before, we always take the lower number of these. So I have infinity versus three. So that means that I'm going to have to round my final answer to three significant figures because that's a lower number. So I'm going to keep the two, the eight, and the three, and look there at the five. So my final answer is going to be 2,830 quarter, I'm sorry, 30 grams. Or if you wanted to be precise, you could also say that the answer is 2.83 times 10 to the third grams. But either way, what I've ended up doing is rounded to three significant figures because I had three significant figures in the measurement number here. Okay. Let's look at another one. Here, I've taken a whole bunch of bottles that are filled with some liquid or something, and I've poured them all together, and I've gotten 4,388 milliliters. I want to find out how many milliliters are in each bottle. So what I do is I take my total volume and then I divide it by the number of bottles that I poured in there, which was 36. So this is the math that I've done. This divided by this, and this is the answer that I get. How did I get these numbers? 36 bottles, I just counted the number of bottles. So 36 is a counting number, and it has an infinite number of significant figures. We don't have to worry about them. 4,388 milliliters, on the other hand, is a number that I would have had to get by measuring, right? Like I take all these bottles and I pour them into a big graduated cylinder or a flask or something, and I, I look at the number, I read the measurement that it comes up to. So this is a measurement number, which means that it's going to have four significant figures. Again, I have four versus infinity, so I'm going to take four because it's the lower number. So I'm going to take the 1, the 2, the 1, the 0.8, and then look next door here. And so I'm going to do 121.9 milliliters. And that's the answer rounded to four significant figures. Now, it doesn't matter how many of these, um, how, how, how many of these things you have in a row. All right, you can have as many as you want. The same rules apply. So let's say that I want to find out how much total liquid I have if I have all these cases of cans and I know how much liquid is in each can, okay? So I have 15 cases and there are 24 cans in each case and I know that there are 324 milliliters of liquid in each can. I multiply these three numbers together and I get this final answer. Let's look at how I got these numbers. 15 cases, that's a counting number, I just count them out. I know there are 24 cans in a case, so again, that's something that I could just count out, so it's infinity. But to find out the volume of the liquid in a can, I'm actually going to have to pour it out into like a graduated cylinder or something to measure it. So that's a measurement, not a counting number, which means that that has three significant figures. So my final answer is going to have to be this number rounded to three significant figures. So I'm going to get 116. I'm sorry. This goes up because of the six next door. So it should be 117,000 milliliters. And if I wanted to be super precise, I could also say one point one seven, move this decimal place one, two, three, four, five times ten to the fifth milliliters. That would be okay too. But either one of them will be my final answer rounded to the three significant figures that are in this measured number. Okay. Now just as a, uh, an end note here, sometimes people ask about how you do counting versus measurement numbers when you're doing addition and subtraction. Well, it turns out that you don't have to worry about it too often because we always add things that have the same units, right? We're never going to do a problem like this where you have people added to grams added to ounces. So a lot of the times it doesn't really matter too much. But it is good to keep in mind that when you're adding measurements, you're going to want to use the significant figures rule. Here I'm using the sig fig rules for addition. And when you're measuring counting numbers, like 
the number of people that I have in various groups, you aren't going to be using those um, significant figures rounding techniques. So in this video, we looked at when we use sig fig rules. We don't always use them. We use them when we are uh, dealing with measurements. Measurements have significant figures. Counting numbers, numbers that we got by counting, do not have significant figures. They have uh, an infinite number of significant figures, so we never have to worry about those.